and, and this counterintuitive outcome. We postulate a kind of a science fiction predictor who somehow got special powers. And we don't know much about her. But we're just interested in bringing apart dominance and expected utility and seeing what you will choose. Whether you will go with the sums I'm about to do or whether you'll, you, you'll, you'll go, oh shit, you know, I've kind of pretended to fully predict that and but the, the extra thousands there, we can see it and grab that. Okay? So that, that's kind of what Newcomb's paradox is all about. And you probably think, oh, obviously, you're probably already starting to think, oh, obviously you'd go for the extra. Or you're probably already starting to think, no, obviously you'd go because the predictor's 90% accurate. But the funny thing about Newcomb's paradox is, even though everyone thinks the solution's obvious, people divide about 50-50 on it. Yeah. So, and they recently did a poll in the garden in <coughs> this respect. So, just as I, I just as I think that you don't want to play the pokies because you're only going to get, I'm, I'm just going to go with the 80 cents. Yeah. Uh, 80 cents in the dollar. So, I think something similar happens with, with, with Newcomb's. And that is that, uh, here, you, you've got, a, if you tick, pick two boxes, you, you definitely get the uh, 1,000, it's there, but you've only got a 2% chance, given the uh, predictor's 98% right, of, um, of the 1 million. And so multiplying those out to give you, to averaging out the different kind of states of the world that you, you, you can expect by two boxing, you get a, a, a $21,000, just as in the case of the uh, pokies, if you average out the different expectations, you get 80 cents out of your dollar. How many turns do you get? Just one, it's only a one off game. How can you average it out if you only get one turn? How can you what? How can you average it out if you only get one turn? Okay, well that's a good question. That's a good question. Okay, but so let's just, um, let's just not leap ahead to that. Um, okay, so now unexpected utility, there's a 98% chance you're going to get that 1 million, but you're definitely mixed out on that 1,000. So you've got to subject that the 98% of a million minus 1,000, and that comes out to. Um, 979,000. So as you can see, the expected utility, just as the expected utility of keeping the dollar is higher than the expected utility of the 80 cents, so too, in the Newcomb case, the expected utility of one boxing, this, 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 this figure here, 979,000, uh, is higher than 21,000. So you, so on expected utility, you should two box. Now I'm gonna sit down in a minute, but before I do, I'm gonna have to acknowledge that, oh, what about the, the dominant option of, well, you know, the money's either there or not, I might as well get the extra. And I put it to you, ladies and gentlemen, that's kind of like the flashing lights and the free piss and the you know $4 ham sandwich in the pokies, right? That's just a con job to get you to perform, to, to get you to choose the wrong choice. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt. Thank you. Um, yeah, Matthew, it's nice to meet you all. Um, so I'm a philosophy dilettante, and this is a, an interesting problem, but I was being invited by Jerry to attend, so thank you very much. And... Um, what I'd like to say is that Newcomb's problem is about the maximisation of dollars, all right? And there's only so many choices you can make. Look, at the top, I, I, predict, I predict that most people after hearing me speak will choose A and B. Because, as you can see... Why don't we do a quick a, show of hands yeah. too? Who feels like they're a, a one boxer right now? No one wants to do this. Okay, yeah, all of them. All of them. All right, and who, so everyone else is two boxes. So, two boxes? Yeah. yeah, all right. So, if you, if you just notice the dollar amounts in A and B, and just add them up, they add up to more than just picking box B. This is what we call the dominant strategy. Okay? Just the amount of money that you can make on A and B is more than the amount you can make on just B. So, that's, that's the first dominance argument. The second do dominance argument is, don't you, don't you guys like to make free money? Yeah. Yeah. There's a thousand bucks guaranteed if you just pick A and B. What's wrong with that? There's no, there's no shenanigans in that. There it is right there. You can see it. You can take it. No problem at all. Okay? So, A and B always gives a higher payoff because you can't average out. It's only a one game, one chance only. It's not, it's not an iterated game. Um, we're not averaging it out. It's either there or it's not. There's no averaging out. There's, there's nothing in between. It's either zero or a million. Okay? And I'm just going to go outside the box for a second. So, Which one? <laughs> so, so, there, so, 
the only way that the expected utility argument works is that you, you assign some mysterious power to the predictor, him or herself. So he's a time traveller, or she's a time traveller. She goes back in time, reads your mind, and then puts the, the money in the box according to what you think. Or the, the time traveller has some sort of knowledge of backward causation, or the time traveller, or, or the, the, the predictor is in, caught in a causality loop, or something. That's all time travel stuff. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> If you have to look at actual real-world data on the, on the um, uh, Newcomb's game, there's been two major surveys. One is the Guardian poll, which is that about 53.5% of people will only choose box B. And the other one is experimentalphilosophy.net, where, where about the same amount of people, 37,000, 55% choose box B and 45% choose A and B. So really, the predictor can't be invariably accurate in actual fact. If we assign him real properties, if he's a real person, if he's a real computer, if he's a real algorithm, he can really only pick 5% more accurately than a coin flip. But okay, say if like, it used the predictor used parameters about your age, sex, uh, nationality, and uh, social status, and then shows whether, based on that, whether you'd be a one box or a two box, it probably have a lot more accurate. Um, this is this has actually been tested. Experimentalphilosophy.net. There's been data about location, gender, and it makes it a little bit more accurate, but not much more. So there's not people are split sort of 50 50. Have they ever tested it with real money? No, they haven't. Because I mean, it's extremely expensive to to make it real. <laughs> <laughs> but I become a billionaire off of that. It's a twisted game, isn't it? A twisted game. Can you run it with like one dollar and a thousand dollars or something? Like a uh, small scale? Know, anyway, like, does it, does it, there's no real experience. Jerry said that the predictor was female and you said the predictor's male. So, <laughs> does, does the gender of the predictor change the outcome? Uh, no. <laughs> Who knows? And here's a, another question about the predictor. Is the predictor actually trying to screw you over so you get less? It's not, is it? No, it's, no, it's, it's purely an old, there's no a, it's a benign kind of like the predictor has no agenda. agenda. Right. As far yeah. as the problem as far as the problem is described in the literature, the, the predictor has no agenda, right. gender or any <laughs> any other property. So is it good to think of the this predictor as a kind of benign god that isn't or absolute even, in its knowledge? Or even just it's a computer kind of like, program. Mm. So even just a computer program or AI even. Sure. sure, so it's a very smart thing which is not mm. just not invalid. Yeah. It's incredibly uh, smart. And so I'm saying I'm saying that because real world data suggests that that only maybe 53 and a half to 55 percent pick B, then the predictor is not invariably accurate. It doesn't have a high predictive power. The expected utility argument falls down because when you you look at these numbers, suddenly instead of it being two percent. It's 43 and a half, it's 45 percent, it's 47 percent, it's 48 percent, 49 percent. And so the amount of money, the expected utility of each box A and B or just box B is about the same. So you mm. might as well take the guaranteed money. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we can briefly reply. Yeah, sure. We can just briefly reply to that. just using box A. 